Hey, hi YouTube, it's Brian Phillips again. Um, anybody has these little ultra micros uh, from Park Zone or E-Flight family companies has found that occasionally you'll get some jitters on the servos. And you can see here I have some extra ones for the flaps. This is a P47 UMX. Um, instantly, I've also got a 3S going on. Um, now this this plane, I've actually done this twice now, and what you've got to do is, I've done this ahead of time because it's really tedious. These are the four little screws that hold, and then this of course is the um, kind of the crash guard that goes over the top of all this. The way I worked it out, I use these tools, I use a really small flat screwdriver, um, a really small, and you can see it's very fine, no, a little bit wider one. A uh, couple different sets of pliers and some scissors, and then an X-Acto knife, which is kind of the, the deal maker. And then a very fine precision uh, Phillips screwdriver. In this case, this is a zero through four by 40. I'm not sure if that's millimeters or what, but anyway, that's a really good tool for that. Uh, incidentally on mine, these two outside screws were actually um, stripped and I don't know if it's because I've already repaired this one but either way you can see that um, I had to cut a little tape away and then of course you have to peel this off which is a really it's very difficult to do that without causing damage um, to the foam and so what you end up with is a little bit extra foam and if you're careful you just leave it where it is and then you put on your foam safe glue which I'll demonstrate later when you reassemble this all I'm going to show you in when in question, how to fix that problem. It's very easy, and uh, I'll show you in just a second. Okay, go ahead. All right, so basically here I've got my wife holding the phone now. What you can see is I pulled those screws out, obviously, and then any residual glue you'll have to get off. And um, what you've got is these fingers here. And you see I've worked it all the way back because I had to use a, my X-Acto knife here to pry. And you can do that just by obviously moving that gear. You can see these fingers, they go along this material here, and that is uh, the trim pot that tells the position, uh, just like uh, there would be a trim pot inside of a normal um, servo. And then of course the motor is, is sort of dumb, it doesn't really know where it's going, it's not like it's encoded, it's just a DC motor. And as it sweeps, the resistive value changes and then it knows its position. So you can see these fingers come to a point where there's like a small gap here. It looks like I may have lost a finger. It's hard to be 100% sure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up folding these back down. Because they find this home position and then they go... It's really annoying. If anybody's ever had it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this with some alcohol, front and back. And then I'm going to fold those back down a little bit further. Let's do that next. I'm back with my Q-tip soaked in um, isopropyl alcohol, or you can do um, just regular. Um, why don't you come over here so you can get a better light on that. You can see it cleans up that surface really easy. Um, and you see how it's getting silver? And you can see how that's dirty now. So what happens is you just lose a little, little bit of material off of this. Usually there's a little bit of oxidation on there too it looks like. So, not the end of the world, um, and just be careful because you want to go with the fingers so they don't bend out like what happened to me there. And this will be probably my fifth or sixth time I've done this. Not on this plane, but total. Um, sometimes they just die. Okay, so we're going to discard this, and then we're going to go ahead and bend the fingers down, which is going to help to make contact. Now, it does look like I might have lost a finger here, so this servo may not ever be 100% perfect. But it's gonna work. It's just it's just the AS3X jitters. I'm gonna need a blade to get in there. I'm trying to force one of them over just slightly. And just use a very, very fine light touch. And then you pull these out just like that. See all I'm doing is just applying a little bit of force to get that hysteresis out of the um, aluminum or gold or whatever it is that's in there. And then I'm going to clean it again, and then I'm basically going to put it back together, and uh, I'll show you the outcome. 
Okay, we got three different types of glue here. Gotta always clean the stupid nozzles on these things. Thin and thick and thick, non-phone safe. Um, one problem we ran into is when I put in the screws, they didn't bite. I've had this problem before, and it's really easy, but what you have to do is you have to use this Instaset stuff or some other similar product. Um, you can tell if this is working because it'll smell. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take and put a drip of this on here, and it will actually hold it together in lieu of the screws. And you just have to be ready. One drip, two drips, and quick insta set. Now we have to use the insta set because we don't want that to, to wick underneath. And then over on the other side, I'll do one drip, two drips as well. One drip, two drips. And yes, this is the non foam safe kind because we're going to use the foam safe kind here in just a minute. Okay, pause it. Okay, so I got foam safe glue. This is the thick style. Now that we've had a chance for that to set up, I'm just going to come in here and basically I'm going to apply this glue to where I see that the paint had been removed. And we can conclude that this will set up well and make a good bond because that's where it was held before. Um, but we may go a little bit on top. And uh, we're just going to throw this down in here, keeping away from the gear, the gears. We're going to actually just push this in here, get it back to where it was before, in approximate position. And then I'm just going to quickly do some kicker. And yes, I do use a lot of kicker on my models because I don't like problems with glue running. Okay, so that should be enough. So, well, as you can see, no deuters. <laughs> 